Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel, Harry Wolf and the Joy of Coding. I have a new background today because I got kicked out of my bedroom. That's right, I'm speaking to you live from my brand new living room and man, it feels good. Glad to have you back. This is another exciting, riveting, enthralling, and type safe edition of Harry Explains TypeScript. Today's edition is all about generics and I will be not speaking generically. That's a low joke. I'm sorry to even go there, but sometimes you just gotta take those low-hanging fruits, pluck them off the trees, take a bite, and say, mmm, juicy. This episode is going to be all about generic, giving you a brief introduction to what is a generic? Why do you care about a generic? How do you use a generic, both in a function and in a class? Generically, we'll be talking just about generics. Now, before I show you any code, Generics are a way for a type system to be flexible, I think is the best way to put it. When you're defining a function, uh, you know what, actually, let's start showing some code. Okay, so when we write a function, and the function we're going to write today is uh, remove item uh, from array. A nice little plain function, we have an array, um, and we have an item. I'm not adding any types of information right now. And uh, this array, we want to remove, uh, let's say we have an array of numbers and we want to remove one of those numbers from that array. So I'm actually going to show us consuming this function. We'll kind of work backwards from there. Um, I'm going to say I have an array of one, two, three. And I actually want there to be no middle number here because I have something against middle numbers, which we're not going to go back. We're not going to deal with my psyche about why that is, just suffice it to say that's, that's the case. And then here, we're going to say that this array is an array of numbers. And my item is also a number. And actually, right now, I can already see that I have a error. That is the wonderfulness of TypeScript that I'm already being told I'm being a naughty person. Um, and here, we're actually going to say that we are also going to return an array of numbers. Um, so I have an error right now here to appease the, the uh, type god. So far, I'm just going to return array. Great. Let's actually make this work. We're going to say uh, index. Uh, and we're going to say array uh, index of or find index is a nice new function. Uh, we're going to say i and we're going to go i equals equals to item. And then we're going to um, do array splice to return the number index and in one and then return the array. Cool. This should work. Now this is great. I have a nice function to remove an item from an array, and it's typed. You can see I have that this argument is an array of numbers. This item is also a number, and it returns an array of numbers. But let's say I want to use this function to actually handle an array of strings. So one, two, uh, three. And again, because I hate middle things, I want to remove number two. Well, as you can see already here, I got some nice fat old red squigglies. And that's because I've said that all I want this array to handle is numbers. Now what I could do if I was not the smartest person is I could make a new uh, remove string item from array and just, just change all these to be string. And then I'll copy this, go down here. And sure, that works, but that's not really reusable. That's also not really what you'd write in normal JavaScript. So why would you even bother with that? So let me command Z that out. And this is where generics come into play. Uh, generics allow you to dynamically define what types of function will use. And you've seen this before in syntax, and this is generics are used all across Java, C Sharp, all these other languages. Essentially, what you, the way that you use a generic is with a type variable. So you know that you know we have a variable. It's like though my variable right here is one, right? My variable is, is my variable right here holds the number of one, right? So if I were to console log out my variable, it would be one. But I also want to do the same thing for types. Like I don't know, this is a number, this is a string, and I want those to be different depending upon how I use the function. So here I can go up here, and actually make this a little bit bigger, and I'm gonna actually say that I'm gonna have a generic of t. And this is a type variable, just like this is a, um, 
just a variable. This is a type variable, which means that I can define it and give it any type information that I want. It also doesn't have to be T. It could be um, type of item if I wanted to. Like there's no reason that says you have to use these short abbreviations. You can do whatever you want. What's great here is now I have this type variable and actually I can use that in place of my type information elsewhere in this function. So I can copy this and right here, instead of number, I can say I want this to be type of array. And then here, number, type of array. And also in here, type of array. So things are passing now and there's no red squiggly lines. Uh, TypeScript by default does good inference, but actually if I wanted to, I could be um, explicit about this type. I could actually say that this is going to be uh, a number. This is actually how you pass in essentially an argument that you're saying the type for this generic is number, and that's what this is essentially going to be substituted as this number here. If I were to change this to string, I'm going to get an error because when this function is being called and used, it's saying that this array is an array of type of item, which is a string. However, I'm providing numbers, hence it's complaining. So this is how we use generics in a function to allow us to pretty much not have to repeat ourselves multiple times. Um, if you have situations like these, this is why you might use generics. Now let's keep going because uh, the next example I think is even more important, which is how to use uh, generics with classes. So we're going to make a class called bag. Um, and this is going to be like my, I mean, we can even call it a collection if you want. Just call it a collection, which is essentially a wrapper around an array. I'm going to have um, items is an array of, uh, let's start with uh, numbers for now as well. It's initially a empty array. We're going to have two methods, one of adding an item, which is a uh, number. And we're going to say uh, this items push item, and then also remove. And this is very similar to the one down below, but that is the point. I'm actually going to copy this because it makes my life a little bit easier to type. I have to change this to be uh, this dot items. Sweet. Now again, I could use this if I wanted to. My collection equals new collection. And I can do my collection dot add one. My collection dot remove one. That's all fine. However, if I want to again use a string, say functions down here, stop bugging me. If I want to add a string here, I get an error. Now, when you're making generics with classes, it's per instance in this case. So what I actually want to do is make a new collection, my collection string. And again, I want this to be a string, but there's no way to tell that. And this is how you can actually do types, uh, generics with classes by again, using these curly braces. So I'm going to just use a uh, type of item here as well. Oops. Type of item. And then again, because this is a type of variable, I can use it anywhere else that I want. And now because of this again, the type inference is working. If I want to be explicit, I could also do the same thing here and say this is a number. And again, if I were to change this to be a, uh, and also down here, we're going to say a string uh, type of item. And this is yelling at me. It's a parameter of type number because I didn't use the right one. Sweet. Now, that's kind of the high level overview of generics. It's built to be flexible so that you don't have to have multiple implementations of a thing. Um, if you want to have multiple types, you can actually just do a comma and say uh, second type. And if you wanted to have a second array, you could easily add that. Second items. And again, same idea here. And this is going to be important because you'll see in the next episode why I'm showing you this here. But then you're going to have an error down here because we haven't actually expected two type arguments. Literally two type arguments, but only got one. So let me undo that so I actually have it in a good state. So that's generics. It's literally a way for you to pretty much have a variable with your typed code. Java has it, C Sharp has it, TypeScript has it to make it a little bit more flexible, a little bit more accommodating when you want to use functions in different ways. Um, 
they're not as scary as they should be. You can definitely make them scary by having constraints around a generic such that you say that a type variable has to always have you know, a length property or it extends this other type. Like you can add a lot of complexities. I'm not covering that today. I just want to give you the brief introduction about what a generic is because in our next video, we're going to have some fun with this knowledge. So stay tuned for that next video. You're going to like it. I guarantee it. Thank you for listening to this video. I hope you enjoyed and learned something generically new this time. If you're not already a subscriber, do subscribe down below. And I'll see you again next video. Bye.